I've been doing a ton of uber Lilith carries on my absolutely busted Necromancer recently over on Twitch, so if you guys are interested in getting the sick mount that comes with it and the title Lilith's Doom, make sure to check me out over on Twitch. I'll be doing this probably for the next couple of days, and I probably won't be doing it for too much longer, so definitely check me out on Twitch if you're interested. But as you can see in the gameplay, uh, Necromancer's damage is by far and away the highest damage in the entire game and it is unbelievably strong. It's very difficult to tell how much damage is actually being done here because Lilith's like nameplate is in the way. So I tried to get a different angle. This isn't ideal for like speed killing here or anything and you could probably get a better angle but if we slow it down a little bit you can see that each individual splinter can do up to like 16 million per hit and each bone spear that we do not only does initial damage but also hits five bone splinters at the same time. You can actually get these to do up to 20 million million per hit but the damage is pretty variable in this game and unfortunately I don't have a very good clip of that but even if we just say each splinter is only doing 10 million every bone spear is going to do five splinters and if you're positioning properly almost all five of those are going to hit and that is easily 50 million damage per second obviously though this build isn't just for uh, uber lilith build is unbelievably strong for literally just playing the game when i go to do lilith i literally swap like just a couple things if you guys would be interested in like just a guide on how to do lilith and stuff like that uh, leave it down in the comments and i'll be doing that but if there's not too much interest because i imagine most of you guys aren't level 100 then i probably won't do that but i mean as you can see in the gameplay and i'll show more gameplay at the end necromancer is just unbelievably ridiculous you just walk around hitting for 10 million constantly one-shotting the entire map you walk into a boss room and you just one tap it and the build is incredibly like not gear reliant you can set it up very very easily but the more gear that you get it scales out of control at this point my necromancer is pretty much perfected incredibly excited to show you guys uh how ridiculously powerful this class really can be but let's just get into things this is kind of going to be a long one because i want to be very diligent with you guys but again um for more information definitely check out the website if you want to be able to easily reference all of these skills the paragon board the priority list for gear all of the different legendary aspect options etc but let's get into it so first off we're going to talk about these skills here surprisingly you actually can swap around your skills a pretty good bit there isn't really much that is mandatory with this build Sorry if I'm going to go over a lot of things. I want you guys to have all the options, but honestly, it's preference. Usually, I don't say it's preference because a lot of things are somewhat mandatory in builds, but for this build particularly, you really only need Bone Spear, Blood Mist, and Corpse Centrals. Bone Spear, obviously, because this is a Bone Spear build and it does unbelievable damage, right? And then Corpse Tendrils because of one of our legendaries being the Corpse Tendril Grasping Veins one, where we get 30% crit chance whenever we pop Corpse Tendrils, but we also deal 90% increased crit damage to enemies damaged by the Corpse Tendrils. Talk more about this later. Corpse Tendrils is also fantastic because it is our only source of getting blood orbs on a non-blood build, at least as far as I'm aware. And it just works perfectly for the build. So this is actually going to allow us to get Fortify by just slapping in one glyph, which is massively going to increase our survivability without really having to lose any damage. Corpse Tendrils also is going to stun enemies and slow enemies, which we will use to get some resource, which we'll talk about. But it also just makes playing the build significantly easier because you can play around this to either play very aggressively or defensively. You just spawn one corpse, corpse tendril, and it literally pixel pulls mobs from like off screen a lot of the times. And then it stuns them for a three seconds, three seconds stun. And you do basically double damage to them while they're stunned. Uh, it makes playing the game super easy. It is a crazy amount of fun. So outside of that, Blood Mist is really just good for the immunity because you don't have really any unstoppable with this build and obviously we need Bone Sphere. Everything else is just supplemental to the build. So Corpse Explosion we're literally just using so that we can get a little bit of extra damage through our Paragon board and our skill tree, but it's incredibly optional. I don't use Bone Splinters anymore because there's literally no need for it if you have the build set up properly. Essence is no longer an issue and I have a section talking about Essence at the end of the video to go over everything with you guys. But briefly, there's also different ways to get Essence through both of our Curse skills, which I highly recommend using. Iron Maiden is very good, not only to, for giving you guaranteed Essence, if you just use it on enemies, 5 Essence per enemy. A lot of times you'll Corpse Central in like 10 guys, and then you'll pop down an Iron Maiden, boom, that's 50 Essence Insta, right? And then you're also going to heal off of it. Necromancer has kind of a healing problem where you don't just have an inherent way to heal, so Iron Maiden really helps with that. The other option is Decrepify. Crepify is good because it makes enemies deal 20% less damage to you, so massive survivability option. It also slows enemies, with, which counts as a crowd control for our Umbral Ring, so that 
actually gives us essence pretty much the same way that Iron Maiden does. It's like one less, but essentially the same thing. But you also get cooldown reduction in the skill tree. And then there is Bone Prison. Previously, I was using Bone Prison, but I think that it slowed the build down. The only reason I was using it was actually for the Fortify. I'll just show you guys in the skill tree. Bone Prison has Fortify, but the problem with the Fortify from Bone Prison it is of your base life and not your maximum life. So this is only 217% HP. So I would have to Bone Prison like 30 guys basically to, to be able to actually get a full Fortify bar just from Bone Prison. And I realized I had enough Fortify as it is just with my Corpse Tendrils. So that's why I stopped playing with Bone Prison. And then we have Bone Storm. Bone Storm, I really don't think is all that necessary, but it's very nice for giving you the damage reduction, and it's also very nice for giving you on-demand 20% crit chance. Usually with this build, if you have it perfectly set up, you will have well over 100% crit chance, which obviously is the cap. If your build isn't really all that great, Bone Storm is fantastic for supplemental crit chance, but the main reason I use it is against suppressor mobs. This build has a very hard time fighting suppressor mobs because your splinters don't work, work anymore, so you'll run out of essence very quickly on those guys and then as a result you're going to lose some crit chance because you get crit chance based on your essence so bone storm i really just use as like oh crap there's an elite or there's a boss that i want to kill or there's a suppressor mob feel free to play around with like pretty much any combination of these but my personal favorite way to play with the build is to use just bone spear with blood mist corpse explosion for the extra damage corpse sendles for the extra damage obviously and then i personally prefer to use decrepify over Iron Maiden for the survivability and for the cooldown reduction so that I get more uptime on my Bone Storm and I get more uptime on being able to just spam Corpse Tendrils. But I very often swap with Iron Maiden and it takes like three seconds to swap it. And I just like using this for like blind burrows and stuff when there's enemies that are like constantly poisoning you. Let's get into the skill tree here. There's a couple different things you can do in here as well. Again, this will all be on the website. So only two points into Bone Splinters. If you're still using Bone Splinters for the essence, you want to slap on Acolytes, but you really do not need this. I'd only use this like under level like 60 maybe. It's it's really unnecessary. And then we get three points into Unliving and three into Imperfectly Balanced for damage. Three into Hued Flesh is very good against bosses and if you're doing like Uber Lilith, but it is pretty much entirely unnecessary for just generally playing in Nightmare Dungeons because you're going to kill stuff and get corpses anyways and you don't really need corpses all that much. Then we're going to max out Bone Splinter or Bone Spear. Uh, you want to take Paranormal. You do not need the Vulnerable because I'm um, pretty sure Bone Splinters is bugged. Don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that the legendary aspect is not supposed to make the first enemy hit vulnerable, but it does. It makes them instantaneously vulnerable, but it's supposed to only make the uh, piercing effect and the splinters apply vulnerable. So you no longer need vulnerable from Supernatural and you just go into Paranormal, which makes it to where if you crit, which you always do, you're going to get an extra two bone shards. And our bone shards are the splinters, which deal 225% bonus damage of our bone spear. So... Uh, yeah, I don't even, I don't even know what to say there. That's why we're able to hit for, you know, 15, 16 million. And we also get 5% crit chance. All right, and then we get Blood Mist here. You could go into Blood Mist, um, Fortify, but I really don't think that it is worth it. You have to, like, build into this, and you have enough Fortify as it is, and you don't really want to spend the skill points there. And then we go 1 into Corpse Explosion. Again, Corpse Explosion is, uh, optional here. And then you go into Grim Harvest and then just three into Fueled by Death. I'm literally just doing this for the 9% additional damage here. If you really don't like managing corpses and having to press a corpse explosion every like six seconds, just take it off and you can just go into like Bone Prison or you could grab another curse or you could literally just reallocate the points anywhere you want. Corpse Explosion is nice when you're really early on into the build to just give you guaranteed essence. So you could put more points into Grim Harvest and just take it out of Death's Embrace. And then you could have six essence per corpse you, you spawn or per corpse you uh, actually explode with corpse explosion. Really helpful early on into the build, but I'll teach you guys how to have infinite essence pretty soon, so you really shouldn't need it, which is why I don't have the points in there anymore. And again, Bone Prison is okay for Fortify, but it's base life, so it's only really good early on. The second that you're like level 100, or even like level 60, and you have a bunch of extra HP, uh, Fortify from Bone Prison really starts to fall off. Then we have three points into Death's Reach for just 12% increased damage. And then uh, Death's Embrace is very optional. I'm doing this for the survivability because Necro has a survivability issue, not really a damage issue. So I'm just getting this for a little bit less damage taken. And you could decide to put this into Amplified Damage instead because we are using a, a curse here. 
and then I just went into Iron Maiden for the heal, but like I said, most of the time I like to go into Decrepify with Enhanced, and then I go into Abhorrent for the cooldown reduction here, which actually is pretty good, especially when you pair it with Corpse Tendrils. Corpse Tendrils we put a few points into, I put four, because you want the cooldown to be around seven seconds or so, because our Legendary gives us crit chance for six seconds when we cast it, and being able to cast this is just very nice, so you want to have a relatively low cooldown. And then we go into the slow, obviously, and then the blood orb. The blood orb paired with one of our glyphs. I'll talk about the paragon later. But paired with just this glyph, we're able to get pretty much permanent fortify uptime because you suck in 10 guys, get 7% of max HP, but you can actually increase your fortify generation up to 10%, literally for free. So you suck in 10 guys, boom, you have 100% fortify, boom, you just get a bunch of damage reduction. So that is fantastic for us, and you don't have to really lose any damage to spec into that. I'm a big fan. And then I go three into Serration. Serration paired with Ossified Essence is pretty much the reason this build is able to scale so heavily out of control. You're able to get a crazy amount of maximum essence. As you can see right now, I have literally the max. I have 274 because I have a potion on. If you minus 50 the potion, that's 224. But then you actually have a uh, glyph, or sorry, a node that gives you 24%. Sorry, it gives you 24 extra essence. So you just get an unbelievable amount of essence, literally upwards of 250. But if you have the thing on, you get nearly 300 essence. And any essence that we have above 50, that's literally 250% extra damage when we are at max essence and a crazy amount of crit chance. So that is pretty much the reason that the build is so good. And then we get compound fracture for just literally 15% more damage because we're critting all the time. And then avulsion is what you want to get on your necklace. Your bone skill does 36% increased crit damage to vulnerable enemies. We're pretty much critting all of the time. Technically speaking, compound fracture is slightly better against bosses because it is active nearly instantly and it is not reliant on you landing a crit, but you have nearly 100% crit chance, so avulsion is better for general play and once the build is perfectly set up, uh, they're pretty interchangeable, but you have higher uptime on avulsion. And then we go three into inspiring leader, literally just for the attack speed. This is pretty optional, but it is nice. And then standalone for 18% DR, which is pretty huge. And then three into Memento Mori to increase our sacrifice bonuses, which I'll show you guys. And then we have Bone Storm. Honestly, this is one of the skills that you could very easily swap out if you have a preference, if you wanted to play with, you know, all of the cor the curse skills, if you want to play with Corpse Explosion and with Bone Prison, or you still want to use like Bone Splinters, you can do pretty much any combination of the skills that I've mentioned at this point, and you'll be perfectly fine. Sorry if that was a bit long-winded. I do apologize. I just really want to be thorough with you guys because there's so many options and there's a lot to talk about with this build. When it comes into our sacrifices, we just want to sacrifice our minions for 5% extra crit chance. And remember, this is being buffed by an additional 60% uh, through our Memento More. Then we also get additional Essence, which is buffed by 60% again. And then Golem for the 30% increased crit damage. And again, we crit pretty much all the time. So that is a ridiculous amount of extra damage there. Now let's get into the Legendaries and then I'll get into the Paragon board. Again, remember everything will be over on the website, a list of all the Legendaries where you want to put them and all the priority lists on the gear. So you want to be using a two-handed with this weapon because you want to put the splintering aspect on your two-hander, which is going to make your bone splinters deal 225% increased damage, which is where the majority of our damage comes from. It's not from the initial hit of our bone spear, it is from our splinter. This is why it's important to position properly and make sure enemies get hit by the splinters and this is why when you fight a suppressor mob you hate your life because the splinters are just disappearing okay you definitely want a two-hander talk more about that later and then on the amulet you have two options Personally, I think that Grasping Veins is just always going to be your best bet for general play. The other option would be putting Ossified Essence here to literally just get 20% extra crit damage versus what you get on a normal piece, which technically in my instance or in my case, it would be slightly better, but it's whatever. I like using this for, for Lilith because that's what I mainly use my character for at this point, and I don't really need the extra 20%, like it's really not a big deal, but keep that in mind if your character's like absolutely juiced out. Uh, you might want to put Grasping Veins on like your gloves and then Ossified on the amulet. And the last damage legendary that I use is going to be Edge Masters for just 20% increased damage all the time. You could alternatively swap this to the Sacrifice bonus one, but this is up a pretty good amount of time. You don't really have some great options here. You could go for more like defense or something if you wanted to. There's like the thing that increases Bone Storm's duration based on corpses, or you can also get Picking Up Blood Orbs reduces Bone Storm's cooldown if you wanted more uptime on Bone Storm. 
For some defensive stuff, there's the aspect of the protector and there's disobedience. These are pretty much your best bet. There's another one that gives you barrier when you use your bone storm. I'd say it's relatively similar in power to protector if you prefer that one. However, it's just going to be low uptime because you are not always bone storming, right? But it is nice because bone storm is kind of your oh crap button. You could decide to run both, but I'm using Deathless Visage, which is not mandatory at all. This is mainly just for damage, although you could swap this to a normal helmet and get even more survivability. But this just has crit and it has max essence, which is fantastic for us. Real quick, I want to talk about how you guys can easily get infinite essence with this build and all of the options that you have, since a lot of you guys were having problems with that in my previous video. You actually have like a ton of options. If you don't care about this, just skip to the timestamp when it comes to gear stats. So you have a ton of options here. The single best thing you can do to get essence is put this on your gloves where you get up to lucky hit a chance to restore primary resource. This is so insane because it is percentage based and because bone spear has a 50% lucky hit chance, but each of your splinters also retains that 50% lucky hit chance. And with paranormal, you fire out five bone splinters. So if you just throw out your bone spear, you can get a ridiculous amount of lucky hits and then you can just proc this over and over again, and that alone should give you more than enough essence. Maybe not on single target, but when you're fighting multiple targets, that by itself should be more than enough. But if that is not enough, I actually use Umbral recently. In my previous video, I recommended um, Exposed Flesh. Where do I have it? Right here. This is pretty similar to uh, the Lucky Hit Primary Resource Restore. However, it is a flat value as opposed to a percentage value. But this is incredibly hard for most people to get, and I could not get another roll of it. I always use this when I'm fighting Lilith, but when I'm just playing the game generally, I found that I don't really need it anymore. But this is definitely a fantastic option for you. Check out my previous video on how to gamble obols if you're interested in trying to farm this out. But it's really hard to get it, and I would highly recommend not putting this on a ring that is not perfect, because that's what I did, and now I'm sad about it. Something that I personally have been using as a result of my blunder putting this on a bad ring is that I am now using Umbral on a really good ring, and Umbral is fantastic because not only does it work with corpse tendrils twice, so if I suck in 10 guys, they get slowed and they get stunned, so boom, that's instantly 80 essence, 80 essence if I sucked in 10 guys, suck 10 guys, and then also if I am using Decrepify, which slows, which does count as a different form of CC because it is a higher slow percentage, then I get another 40 essence. So I can get literally 120 essence in a matter of like a second just by using Umbral. This is also where getting more max essence on your gear comes into play because not only is max essence more damage, but it also gives you more of a cushion because if I have 274 essence, I can spam my bone spear significantly more often. That's also why you, very, you really want to have essence cost reduction on both your boots and your amulet, especially on the amulet because you can get 23%, right? So my Bone Spear only costs 18 Essence as opposed to a typical, like what, 25, right? So that is hugely helpful. If you are somehow still having Essence issues, you wanna try Mother's Embrace. You'll lose a lot of damage by putting this on, but you get 40% uh, resource cost reduction and your core skill relatively often hits five or more enemies. So try this in tandem with like umbral ring or something like that in my previous video i recommended trying the um, torment legendary the aspect of torment this thing actually sucks because it just increases your base regeneration and your base regen on essence is three a second so this would make it go from three a second to four a second which is terrible so do not put this on there's actually a pretty decent one called the aspect of potent blood if you're still suffering this gives you 10 essence, but I think it goes up to 15 or 20 if you have actually a good roll. Yeah, it goes up to 20. And you get blood orbs pretty frequently with our corpse tendrils, right? So if you're still suffering somehow, you can get this. That's 20 essence per blood orb if you just make sure to like pop some health potions prior to actually picking those up. Sorry that took so long, but I wanted to give you guys all the options. With all of that in mind, it should be literally impossible for you to run out of essence. When it comes to the stats on our gear, with the helmet, you want a Deathless Visage, not a big deal. This has max essence and crit damage, which is a very nice damage option, but if you can't get this, it doesn't matter at all. Just have a normal helmet, and you want max essence, cooldown reduction, armor, and max HP for the survivability. When it comes to the chest, you kind of want a mix of these two. Because we're able to get fortified with this build, we can actually tap into DR while fortified, which drastically increases our survivability, which is the literal only downside to this build. So. A perfect chest for you would be damage reduction first and then damage reduction from close because you can get a really high roll on that and next to that you'd want damage reduction while fortified and then you want total armor that chest getting the quadruple 
damage reduction there gives you a ridiculous amount of survivability and you'd pretty much want the exact same thing on your pants here my pants actually my pants are literally perfect right they just have low rolls but i have dr armor dr while fortified and dr from close the amount of dr just from these two pieces is insane as you can see, I have a little bit of damage on my chest because I use this one for Uber Lilith, but you don't really need all that additive damage when you're just doing normal stuff. You'd rather just have the survivability just so the build is comfier to play with. When it comes to the gloves here, the most important thing is getting rank 2 Bone Spear and then getting Lucky Hit Chance to Restore Resource. For a while, instead of the crit damage here, I was actually using just Lucky Hit, but I took it off and realized you don't really need it, so I just went for the more damage. You don't really need Lucky Hit with this build because it's already a 50% chance. You could definitely go for Lucky Hit instead of the crit damage if you just want it to be a little more consistent for you, but I didn't really notice a difference. And then getting the flat crit chance is uh, absolutely mandatory. This is a pretty good pair of gloves. Really happy with these. And then when it comes to the pants, I already explained that. And then with the boots, the boots are really nice. So this is where you can get a lot of movement speed. You want essence cost reduction. That's pretty much the most important thing, so that your Bone Spear costs less. And then you want ranks to Corpse Tendril, so that the cooldown is lower. Mine is at 7.3 seconds, but I'm missing a rank, so mine could be about 7 seconds. And I don't have cooldown reduction on my helmet, right? So if you had CDR on helmet and a higher roll here, the, I'm pretty sure your Corpse Tendrils would be 6 seconds, which would be perfect with your uh, Grasping Bane's uptime. And then I have double movement speed. The movement speed gets me to where I'm movement speed capped after I kill an Elite, which feels fantastic. But... Generally, for most people, I'd actually recommend this other pair I have, where you have Fortified Generation instead, because if you can get 30% Fortified Generation, your Blood Orbs go from 7% to nearly 10% Fortify from your Glyph, which massively increases your survivability. So I'd really recommend trying to get basically this pair that I have here, but for speed farming, I like the movement speed. And then we have our weapon. You want a two-handed sword. Scythes are okay because they have life on kill if you want the survivability, but then you miss out on the crit damage. The stats that you want, you want in this order. You want vulnerable damage first, intelligence, and then curveball for you, you want core skill damage. You'd think, why do you want core skill if you're stacking so much crit damage with this build? Well, because you're stacking so much crit damage, you're actually, the amount of crit that you have is well over like 600%, actually 700%. So the amount of crit damage that you're getting from the weapon is actually going to be less value for you than the core skill damage because you have such little additive damage in the Paragon board with Necromancer. So the core skill damage is technically better than the second crit damage roll. So this other sword that I have in my bags, this one right here, is exactly what you want pretty much. I just can't use it yet because I don't have a better splintering roll and the item power is slightly lower. But I've been playing around with it and it's basically just as powerful as my current one even though it's a lower item power and the splintering roll is worse. So again, Vuln intelligence, core skill, and then crit. Then when it comes to the rings, a lot of people have been going for lucky hit on the rings. Do not do this. Do not get lucky hit on your rings. You are massively nerfing your damage for no reason. You do not need the lucky hit. You want crit chance, and then vulnerable damage, and then max essence, and then crit damage. Getting the vulnerable is insanely good. Do not skip out on that. That's a crazy amount of damage to lose. The crit chance is mandatory so you can reach crit cap. Max Essence is a very, very good for us because it's literally just percentage damage, basically, and it's crit chance. And then crit damage, obviously, is good for extra damage. Then when it comes to our amulet, you want exactly my roll. The most important thing is ranks to Avulsion or Compound Fracture. And then cooldown reduction, so that you can get cooldown reduction for your Grasping Tendrils and your Blood Mist. And then Essence Cost Reduction is very important so that your Bone Spirit costs less Essence. And then for me, the movement speed is absolutely mandatory because Necro is insanely slow. But with all my movement speed, I'm fairly fast considering I'm a Necro. And if I kill an enemy with my boots, I'm literally at movement speed cap. The Paragon board will be over on the website and I'm actually spec'd into my Lilith version right now. This board is pretty much the Rob board, but I actually made some changes. So shout out Rob. Pretty much used his pathing, but I changed some of the glyphs and a little bit of the point allocation. So... In the first glyph slot here, I go for Blood Drinker for the Fortify. If you want more damage, you alternatively just swap this to either Sacrificial or Control. Control is like good if you're using Decrepify with the slow. It's not as mandatory. Like if you want to see really big numbers, you slap on Control and you max out the int here. And whenever you Corpse Tundral a mob, you'll be doing significantly more damage because it's a 20% multi and you get like a, over 100% additive damage here. I just slap in Blood Drinker for the Fortify and you get a lot of damage on here as well. You get extra buffs to that and you also get more dexterity, which will come into play later. But if you're still leveling, I'd recommend just slapping in like a Essence or Exploit first because those are a lot of extra damage for you. Your first board, you want to go into Bone Graft. This is the most important because it gives you a bunch of extra Essence and then you can also get a lot of crit damage there and a crazy amount of Essence on kill 
and max essence, which is crazy for us. And then you can also get some crit damage and even some max HP, which I'm a big fan of. And then you go into exploit for a crazy amount of vulnerable damage and just extra damage multi. And then you can also spec into some extra bone skill damage up here. And then the next board, you want to go into scent of death for damage reduction or just 15% increased damage. And there's also some crit damage here. For Lilith, I'm specced into this extra damage to injured, but this is useless if you're just playing the game normally. So again, check the website. I basically just take these points out and I go into more max HP. And then for this glyph, I have imbiber this is actually really good because necro doesn't have very much additive damage and this is a great willpower board so you get 107 percent damage while healthy so as long as you make sure you're popping health pots and stuff you get this active all the time and there's also some more damage injured which i don't really like but it is what it is um, and then there's damage to healthy which is actually really good for us because we want to be one tapping with our bone spear and then we have flesh eater this is very conditional and i don't really think it's that good but you can pretty much grab it for free it's very good for lilith but it is not good for just generally playing the game but it does pop every once in a while and you can get some really big numbers which is pretty satisfying get some extra damage here that's pretty suboptimal and then you get gravekeeper gravekeeper you could also decide to swap out for something else if you wanted to do control in this board instead but the bonus of Gravekeeper here is that it gives you an additional 40% damage to elites because you're buffing uh, the targeted node. So this is great for Lilith, just a crazy amount of extra damage. And lastly, I have Essence in the last board. But again, if you're leveling, you want to put this into an earlier board and then get a lot of decks around it because Essence is just a crazy amount of extra damage for us. And this board doesn't really have all that much good stuff. There is a world where you path over and get this damage while healthy, but it's a little bit hard to do it, so I just decided to omit it. This video is already really long, and I just want to give you guys some quick gameplay and a little bit of gameplay tips, but I will be trying to speedrun this. Generally speaking, you kind of want to play the build a little slow and a little methodically. The biggest tip that I have for you guys is to play around your corpse tendrils. If you find like a big pack of mobs, don't just spam your bone spears. You want to kind of kite them around, kill one guy, get that corpse, and then suck all the guys in. You want to get a big suck, okay? Getting a big suck is big for you. I'm kind of going to try to speedrun with the build just because I want to give you guys some good gameplay and show you that you can speedrun. Uh, one thing is that you want to make sure to corpse or pop a corpse explosion every once in a while just for that extra damage. I do have a modifier that makes me deal less damage to close enemies right now, so I'm doing a little bit less damage. And with the lightning storm, I'm literally just going to uh, go into a blood mist here. Obviously, if you want more survivability, uh, make sure to actually pick up the blood orbs. As you can see, I get a pretty decent amount of fortify there. That was actually bad. I didn't get and didn't hit too many mobs with it. But generally, if there's a lot of mobs nearby, you can get pretty good uh, uptime on fortify. I'm not really speedrunning anymore because I just wanted to show off some things. So this won't be the world's fastest clear, but you can actually clear pretty quickly on Necro. Do a little blood mist because I don't want to get hit by that. But the build is pretty chill. I mean, if you play around it particularly, it's like incredibly powerful. And, but as you can see, I'm just running around one tap and everything. Okay, I'm gonna I'm getting a little getting a little scared, so I'm gonna pop my bone storm for the damage reduction, and then I could just spam to crepify on these guys and make them deal less damage. And as you can see, I have fortify, I have barrier, like I'm I'm pretty safe. But again, I'm playing it a little bit weird. You could play way safer than I am right now. And then this is where Corpse Centrals is crazy good. Okay, <laughs> I didn't get a good suck because everything just got one-shotted, man. But yeah, usually if you kind of wait around and you get like a really big, a big boy suck, um, you get crazy amount of blood orbs. I might get some more gameplay. Because this dungeon, just trying to speedrun it, the density is not great in here. I'm not going to wait for that. Screw that. No blood mist. You don't really want to use your blood mist offensively. You'll kind of run into a big problem if you do that. But as you can see, I got a really big suck right there just to show it off. And I can also slap down the Decrepify and get all the extra essence. And my essence is chilling, right? Like, why would I need lucky hit? Why would I need all this stuff? I can literally just here, I'll show you guys my essence again. I'll just spam some some bone spears into Narnia. Look, look at my essence. My, my essence is fine. I'm just spamming it into Narnia. I'm trying to waste my my bone spears and I literally or waste my essence and I literally can't. Whatever, but yeah. <laughs> but if I just suck some dudes in, I get all my essence back, man. Here, I'll just uh I'll clear the dungeon. Man, you could do this dungeon in actually like two minutes, even on Necro. And you can see I'm pretty quack, quick. I'm pretty quack. I'm pretty quick with it because of my boots, which is pretty nice. But as you can see, that dungeon was really quick. You could do it unbelievably fast if you were to play particularly. But that dungeon had literally the worst density of all time. So I just wanted to show the build again and just give you guys you know, more gameplay tips in like a dungeon with actually more mobs. So generally, 
I walk up, I see I see a couple guys, I just one-tap them, and then I just walk away. You don't want to just sit here spamming the bone spear, right? But once you have a good amount of guys, you kind of want to go towards like the edge of the pack, find one guy to corpse central, and then suck all the dudes in. Do I have a modifier where I deal less damage? Oh my god. No, that was just a DR mob. So I kind of just walk around, throw some bone spears out, and once you have like a good amount of mobs, especially with a suppressor mob, you want to just find one corpse that you can get, and then corpse central everything together, and then you just one-shot it like that. You really want to play around your Corpse Central. If you don't play around the Corpse Central and being able to suck all the dudes in, uh, you're really not going to have a good time. A lot of the time, I like to wait. If you're in a particularly scary situation, what you can do, I'll show you a little little example of it. So let's say there's like 50 mobs here. I'm super, super scared. I can actually Corpse Central and then sit in my Blood Mist. And now that they're all Corpse Central, then I can just pop out of my Blood Mist and kill them. That's particularly helpful when they're Suppressor mobs because the suppressor mobs are really big bullies for us on this build. So being able to just literally immune the damage there, and then um, you kind of use it for offense and for defense, especially you know in a really, really scary situation. The biggest thing is just kind of playing around the corpses, trying to make sure to spawn one corpse when you need it. But also, if you're using Decrepify, you can kind of just spam it for the uh, damage reduction. I'll try to give one more example here. So as you can see, I have like literally 100 guys on me. So what I want to do is go towards the edge of the pack, find one guy to corpse central, or kill and then corpse central him and then boom i can just blow everything up and i can blood mist for the survivability i didn't really need to blood mist there and blood mist does have a long cooldown alternatively when you don't have blood mist up you could just pop a bone storm and then you can get all of the additional damage reduction there and then keep in mind that when you actually pop a corpse central you're going to get a lot of blood orbs so every once in a while you don't want to just always run away from them if you want more survivability if your fortify is low just make sure to go and pick up all those blood orbs for the additional damage reduction while fortified right uh, but most of the time, like, as you can see, my Fortify is literally full right now. I can just walk around, and I can just, you know, kill stuff. I don't really have to worry about it. And a lot of the time, if you're trying to, like, speed clear with the build, I kill stuff off screen. I'll Corpse Central something and literally just walk away and make sure to just aim there. This build is probably my second favorite build in the entire game to play, because I literally feel like I'm playing an FPS when I'm playing with it. And it is just super satisfying, Corpse Centraling everything and blasting it. Sorry for the video being very long. I feel really bad about it, but I wanted to just go over everything with you guys and show you how ridiculously powerful everything is and give you guys as much info as possible to take advantage of it uh, while it still exists. If you guys want a dedicated video going over Lilith and strategy and the exact build that you want to play to very easily get it down, uh, like the video and let me know in the comments and enough people, if enough people are interested, I will do it. But otherwise, uh, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe for videos similar to this one.